Okay, let's let's move on. And I would like now to invite the stage to my co-founder and senior advisor at the Staff Commons, Paul and Based on, on customers' feedback, he's the legato of the startup ecosystem. <laughs> so Yeah, thank you, Oscar, for this very kind introduction. Uh, so, first of all, I wanna I wanna say uh, great thanks for 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 all of the partners that are actually helping to make this uh, event happen because uh, it, we we got this opportunity relatively late and we 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 decided to jump on it and make it happen as entrepreneurs that we are. Uh, so big thanks for Helsinki Usima Regional Council and of course Lush and uh, and also collaborating with the Global Entrepreneurship Net, uh, Entrepreneurship Week as an as an official event also to help promote uh, the activities from here much broader than what we can physically handle here. So we are live streaming uh, to Facebook. Uh, we are recording the videos and we'll be spreading these as we usually do to utilize the digital to expand the reads uh, beyond what we can physically handle. So uh, a little bit of startup commons for those who uh, we really focus as being kind of like a, at the global level we more as a uh, orchestrator or facilitator making sure that those connections between the ecosystem start to happen and our focus is really to accelerate the, the ex ecosystem development uh, globally and we do it through the, the three different aspects on education, uh, consulting, and then digitalization. So yeah, my background is pretty intense when it comes to entrepreneurship. It's who I am, it's not what I do, it's, it's just my life. Uh, and then as an ecosystem developer, also been doing uh, a lot, first in the Helsinki ecosystem region and then beyond, uh, and also developing the horizon programs and so forth and uh, this really is the core of where we operate so it's all about combining the innovation through entrepreneurship to make things happen and then digital to looking to scale things so these are the three cornerstones of our knowledge and focus and expertise for everything that we do and they, they are interconnected and it's the key is that we have uh, deep understanding of all of these topics uh, to be able to combine how they work together. We have a very clear mission to scale innovation entrepreneurship globally via the ecosystem digital, uh, via the ecosystem development and digital transformation. So this is purely our mission. Everything that fits to that, we are happy to discuss. And our vision is to connect and enable data flow within and between startup ecosystems globally. So these are small tasks to get done but uh, we're happy to focus on those they need to be such that we don't ever run out of things to do from the strategy perspective uh, we want to be globally neutral uh, meaning that we are not representing any government we're not representing any big investor we're not representing any big company we are representing the innovation entrepreneurship mission and uh, from that perspective, we share and license knowledge, best practices, encourage others to do that uh, for digital ecosystem development uh, and specifically looking at scalable ways. And then uh, to collaborate on open standards development. So here's really the three, three key activities that we do and quickly uh, the education part, uh, since digital is the core we want to make all of our knowledge about building ventures and being innovative entrepreneur as a, as a digital content and make that available as an e-learning content. We have 26 hours of that. Uh, the same applies to ecosystem development expertise and knowledge. Uh, we want to make that digital and we now have it. Uh, from from the expertise of building ventures, uh, this is the, the captured knowledge by multiple different uh, serial entrepreneurs to, to try to structure it in a consumable, consumable manner. Making that as a digitally available uh, to really help uh, reduce the likelihood of failure and improve the success potential. 
and also to connect that e-learning. Uh, it's mainly the content. We are happy to distribute the content to any e-learning platform providers as well. But the key piece is also this uh, 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 logic to connect with the my data concept and the knowledge about individuals' data when it comes about their learnings and skills and and other activities as well. So uh, we call this an ecosystem level user account approach. And, and the key here is that uh, we are very much on board with the my data. We have. We are part of the declaration, we uh, sign up to all the values and all of uh, the aims of that. But this test also gives a, a type of insights that by providing e-learning to help scale the innovation entrepreneurship knowledge to multiple parts of the world, available anytime by, by anyone. This is something that, for example, governments can make available. But it also gives information of who's consuming that, how much they are consuming, what modules they are consuming, how often they are consuming, what they're learning, and, and, and so forth. So that's the type of uh, my data that can be collected from innovation, entrepreneurship, knowledge and expertise uh, growing in your ecosystems and collecting data from that. And with the principles of my data, making that data available for the individuals themselves to share or to take to different platforms or not. So, and we don't believe that everything can be done in e-learning way. So another approach is to do a scalable way of providing training, uh, also in person, and make them work together. So we provide uh, training of certified trainers to scale in-person coaching and training capacity. So training of trainers, so instead of us training entrepreneurs, we train trainers train entrepreneurs and we create a, a, a model around that and also bring the my data concept to track the trainers and the trainers data about how much they train what feedback they are getting and that can improve their ability for example when they want to be an advisor for a startup uh, on an equity position so that their expertise can be validated through the training that they actually do and feedback that they get but again same thing putting that under my data, under their own control. And same goes for training ecosystem developers to accelerate ecosystem development elsewhere. So we are only a few people, and we don't want to hire a big army of employees to grow Startup Commons as a company, because the scalability and digital is the core, how we need to find uh, solutions into how we operate. So the, on the consulting side, uh, basically, we help to clarify uh, the structures in the ecosystems, trying to make them more understandable. And this is the type of knowledge that we share uh, also do through those trainings. And when we talk about startup ecosystem, it's of course the combination of innovation ecosystem and entrepreneurship collaborating and working together where the startups emerge. And this is one of the oldest and uh, the most iterated open standard tool that we have created that lives a life of its own. Very similar to as like business model canvas lives the same on, on life. We know this is used a lot in places that we never heard until later. And that's a great way of how, how the, the knowledge can scale. And the point of this is to bring a framework that helps to put all the other things into a, a format and structure. So with these development phases, we can then develop many different ways of communicating and also taking that into the digital platform environments to, to make things more understandable. So, do it, so that you can separate the juniors from the seniors in the level of expertise or progress they are having as a company without looking any other numbers than uh, this type of simpli simplified approach. So then it can be looked as a funnel that, and, and many other things can be developed uh, based on that. And when we look at uh, the ecosystem as a whole, there, through these development phases, we can then start segment and uh, create uh, more structure around what's happening in the ecosystem. And then we can start putting individual startup events, individual activities, expertise, support service functions, uh, uh, investors' interest at what development phase they invest and so forth in a more understandable and structured model that can then be looked uh, in, in more detail going forward. 
And all of this, of course, is generating a lot of data and a lot of data is, is existing in the ecosystem and a lot of data is moving in those applications and activities. So in the, in the consulting work, what we do usually to uh, do, uh, we do this uh, assessment of each ecosystem and then we do workshop with the ecosystem actors uh, to basically define uh, how the ecosystem development uh, should look like. And more and more going forward, we are looking to not do this ourselves, but actually having other ecosystem developers and builders helping to do this more globally. And, you, and soon you will just understand why when we look at some of the numbers. So similarly, as uh, different startup, uh, startups have their development phases, the ecosystems also have their maturity phases. And this is one of the key ways to also help communicate and measure the progress of uh, how ecosystems are evolving. There's a lot of more details behind these slides, which I will not go, but uh, happy to share those afterwards, because most of what we do is shared under Creative Commons to make available to anyone who wants to give it a go. And then uh, coming to digital, which is one of the key themes here today, it's really about making things more visual, uh, connecting and enabling that data flow. And then we need to look at what that actually looks like and what does it mean in practice. So one aspect is to understand these ecosystems, how they are. So we have cities like Helsinki, we have uh, Vanta Espo close by as a region. For example, the, the Helsinki region government perspective is looking at multiple cities collaborating together, while sometimes those cities feel that they need to compete with each other. And then we have countries, uh, and then we have business verticals. And the business verticals are different, that they are more on private side and they cross-cut multiple ecosystems, uh, local ecosystems. But they all have the same actors in it. They all have the same actors and they have duplicated data about all of those same actors in different places and there is very little uh, in the digital level how these things can be uh, handled these ways but it helps to see uh, these ecosystems in this light. So we have countries where we have cities and regional ecosystems and then we have business verticals that are cross-cutting and the, the, the business verticals are more driven by multinational bigger companies whereas the, the locally centralized ecosystem, including multiple different verticals, are mainly driven by uh, the government or governmental related funds at the early phase and then local private companies uh, in the later phase and, and banks and so forth. And all of these have the same challenges. Every single one, every single country uh, are having, having similar challenges. So in these ecosystems, there's a lot of data about interactions and, and about information, millions of ideas, entrepreneurs, startups, investors, mentors, talents, you name it. There's a lot of elements and all of those elements have a lot of different data points, not only about what they are, but activities, how they go through that funnel and how they interact with each other and so forth. And, and we can all understand that A, this is extremely valuable and B, it's extremely difficult for anyone alone to figure out how to go about it. At the same time, we don't have to be dis in despair because you think of any sport in any country and you think of what data is available about all of the athletes, all of the junior players, all the minutes played, all the failures made, how their career has developed, uh, and you know it can be done. But we're doing it only for fun, maybe we should also do it for business. So the connectivity in the ecosystems is the single biggest factor for growth. So improving the connectivity directly impacts the e efficiency of the ecosystem that directly impacts the scalability of uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. The speed of collective execution and learning is the new unfair advantage. So the more data there is, the more available it is, the, the, the more competitive the ecosystem can be. It's as simple as that. The data and information and knowledge is the gasoline in the ecosystem. And the data infrastructure is really the engine to make it happen. So to create that engine is, is a collective challenge for everyone. 
And this is where the collaboration is necessary for this to really start to work. And that's what we are here after. You can all imagine the applications explained so far. Is, it, they are all silos on their own. There is very little connectivity or data sharing uh, between different applications. For example, like the, the uh, Bordio with uh, funding applications. Uh, but more and more applications exist, the more and more rich data exists, but it needs to be made to actually work. So we can look at some of the vision, like what can we imagine how it could be. So it should be much simpler. We have all the technologies. It's nothing about not having technology, not knowing how to do it. All of these things are done in any other industry uh, or many other industries. And it's paradox that the ecosystems that are all about innovation and entrepreneurship is so analog globally. And that's what we really want to help change. So the key part of starting to make that change is to bring things that are invisible to start making those more visible. So the typical way of how most people who are not software developers uh, see the internet is, is this way. So it's what we see from the user interface is what we believe is what's happening in the internet. That's for like the normal users because we used to use local applications on the computers we never really think what's underneath here. So what happens behind the scenes is the real digital economy. And of course, now this topic is starting to raise more because of the Cambridge Analytica and you know, Facebook uh, data challenges and many other issues. Uh, but it's also where the big business happens and it's also where the opportunities lie and that's what the digital economy is about. So then when we look at the applications uh, on the technology side, most of the applications that you see online are actually built also with the old model. That they are closed silos without having connectivity with the other applications. Of course, when we exclude the five big ones and many others, uh, they are different. They look like this. So they're open for business also from the other side not only from the user interface where people manually move data from one place to another through their head. So they're actually available to connect uh, directly into that valuable data and share data between the applications. The first thing is to make your application open for business. If it's not open for business, then there is no business. It's really simple. So uh, this is to compare uh, what needs to happen at individual application level and this is something that goes from the mindset of the creators, from the mindset of the management, from the mindset of the governments or operators who operate these applications, private or public side, that the first step to make this into reality is to make yourself available to be open for business on that side. Then the proactive side is the, it's the next challenge but the, that what everyone can do is, is look at it from this perspective. And when we look at the ecosystem data, that the, the beginning point is that we had the, all the activities, but the data is very invisible, is to start working on, on this. And when we look at then this from a proactive precision, how do we start connecting these different applications to communicate with each other, we start facing these types of challenges like well, what data do you actually have? Who has the ownership of that data? Uh, where is it documented? Um, what data do you have? What type of access rights there should be? And so forth. And then also the architectural perspective of how do we connect these to each other? So the more applications we add, the more challenge we will have in the number of connections we should be able to facilitate and create. So the approach is to build an infrastructure, you know, like in the own old phone systems when they were, you know, some there was an operator who actually manually connected, like this goes to here, this call goes from here to there, and now we have a bit smarter systems. But it's the same thing, having someone who actually um, looks after the connectivity from the perspective that each application only needs one connection. 
to connect through that infrastructure to all the other applications that want to be connected and open for business. And then the other side is the user's data. The user's data is not allowed to be moved between the application to another application without the user's consent. And architecturally, it doesn't make sense to duplicate the data in every single application. So the logical model is what my data uh, movement is building, but needs technical solutions to support that, is how to make the data portable and how to have the data actually in the hands of the user so they can take the data wherever they want to take. Real-time or one-time use, use it now, don't use it anymore, but not lose that data. Uh, so we need, need to approach this uh, from two different perspectives from user side and then from the infrastructure side to move all the other data that is more statistical and, and so forth. And as I said, we are, we are part of the My Data movement and signed the declaration to, to, to look at this <coughs> and actually also uh, involved with that new governance on the My Data side that is looking to develop the open standards around uh, data sharing models and we want to make that uh, connect with what we are doing, uh, data sharing, people's data sharing on the ecosystem level. And these are just the structures where just one of the actors putting this information together, looking to collaborate with all those others who want to be part of this. And big part of making ecosystems work on the digital side is this something like this. Every ecosystem should have their own operator responsible. So while applications can connect to each other freely and they can be spread, that's, that's great and possible, but the operators can look at to making it easier for everyone. So they can help to look at the, the heavy lifting parts of regulatory aspects and, uh, and building those infrastructures and operating them locally so that locally you can connect through one infrastructure and be connected in Malaysia directly with the relevant services is needed, but that needs a gateway on the other side that someone looks after that it's in line with the local government regulations and so forth. And this should be something like public-private partnerships and this connects directly what Wake is looking to do is to facilitate these types of operators to be created and funding their operations at least to the point that they can sustain themselves and develop if they can continue developing as private companies. And there's a lot of analogy here how the mobile operators were created to the world initially. But many of them were like government operators initially or government funded until they became private companies, uh, multinational ones. But it's such a big investment or risk or complexity that usually no private investor will want to drive money to this until it's proven. So at the heart of all of that connectivity uh, is the open standard data and that's the big uh, initiative that we are launching here uh, to bring interoperability and aggregation comparability and automation so if there is no open data standards it's very hard to be compliant with any type of connectivity uh, so that's kind of a, a where it starts so operators uh, uh, need to start establishing themselves somewhere those already exist. Some of them don't identify them as that terminology, but this is part of the terminology that needs to start existing and, uh, and then the responsibility areas uh, clarifying. So while ecosystem builders and developers can be any individual in any ecosystem, the operator is someone who takes on a bigger responsibility for the long-term development uh, over time. So I'm not going to list all of them, you, you, can, you can get these slides afterwards, but the point is that there are, there are uh, different aspects of what's relevant on the local level, what's relevant on the global level, and then what is the kind of the operations, operators area. And then when we look at the kind of the ecosystem level architecture on top of uh, top of this type of uh, template, we can then then basically imagine how different applications live on top of 
those different activities, you know, event systems, evaluating tools, canvas tools, project management tools, online forums, matchmaking, mentoring, and each of these applications have two sides to that data, the service side and the, the customer side, data that can be connected through these types of infrastructures. And the, the, the big thing and the difference here, specifically when we are in Finland and part of Europe, is the democratic approach. So it's not about owning everything and trying to be the monopolistic actor in the internet, trying to squish everyone's other opportunities, but to create models where the ownership is shared, co-developed, driving down the cost of everyone's developed, learning faster together, and the data should always belong to rightful owners. So if the service side data, it belongs to the service operator and they can share how much they want to share with others. And when it's individuals, it's their data to take it wherever applications they want to take it. So we look at a bit more the open uh, standards approach. So really the heart of everything is by together, we can do more with less and faster. So if this doesn't make sense, then I don't know what makes sense. But this means that with all the limited resources collect collectively everyone's having, more can be achieved faster while collectively learning faster and becoming smarter collectively all the time. So we, as Startup Commons, we have since 2013 worked with more than, more than 30 ecosystems on the ground level. So that actually means traveling to every ecosystem, doing those consulting workshops and so forth. But the market is a bit bigger than what we can ever handle. So there's more than 1,000 cities with population over 500,000, another 4,000 cities with population of 100,000 to 500,000. And this doesn't include the business verticals on top of the ecosystem. So there is no point, there is no business we can lose by sharing as much as we can for everyone else to be able to do this and help accelerate. That's why we have such a big mission and that's why we have such a big vision behind is that there's so much to do and the world is full of problems to solve. They're not going to run out of problems in the world to not ha need to have innovation entrepreneurship to try and try to solve those. So each of those ecosystems, as we have discussed, they really struggle with the fragmentation and the digital transformation. And there is a definitely need for more scalable model. So creating standards to connect these data silos and making data flow is the approach to, to take. And the challenge is that when we want to grow the ecosystems, uh, grow the ecosystems, it's counterproductive to try to put them all in one platform or one big space. So now there's a like, like Finland, Helsinki and Paris are competing who has the biggest ecosystem in one building. So in France is Station F and here is Maria 01 and it's going to be bigger and bigger. But there's no, like it's, it's going to eventually run out. You, you will not be able to fit everyone in one place. And we don't know, we are now in one building, but there's a lot of things going on here that we have no idea what's happening. So the, the, what, everyone in the same location doesn't fix it. Everyone in one platform doesn't fix it. So we need much better approaches. So open standards for growth is really to come out from own silos of own ecosystems, from own applications and looking at what's happening elsewhere. What can we do? And that's the core of what this event here is about. As an MVP for the Global Develop Ecosystem Developer Summit. We all know how the standards have failed in past and we know how good does it feel when we have good standards that actually work. So we don't want to create, re replicate this anymore. We want to have that in when it comes to startup ecosystems around the world. So let's not do this, let's do that. So that's why we need to do this globally and not just by one country. So Open Standards for Growth is a separate initiative that we are pushing forward as a multi-stakeholder activity to join together to start looking at the st these standards that we have created many of them and contribute for those, but we don't want it to become something that is known as Startup Commons, even though the name is fitting for that. 
but it's something that needs to have a bigger life and bigger, better focus around those standards as itself. So working together across borders, ecosystems and organizations to develop these open standards together. So there is this type of uh, perspective to, to consider like it was the, I think you had the ecosystems and ecosystems. So, so there is this type of, of course, all the countries and cities are also competing to have the talent and investors and ecosystems, but there is also the collaboration aspect. And same is for the private applications. But it's finding everyone's own position and focus how they want to see this type of picture in their own strategies. We have created these types of principles in our own work already earlier that are directly uh, applicable also the Open Standards for Growth initiative. So the key here really is that if there is no shared assets, there is no working together at the ecosystem level. And, but what those shared assets are, what are the common things is called decided uh, collectively. So together more with less and faster. Bigger user pools, better matching, better user experiences. More data, better data, more automation. If you don't have data, you don't have good data, you're gonna not have automation. That's as simple as that. And nobody, excluding the big ones, has good quality data. And even the big ones don't have quality data of individuals. So meaning Facebook doesn't have Google's data. Amazon doesn't have Facebook's data about me. There are still separate silos. My data is the only a model, a concept, to be able to aggregate personal data from any source so that I can have all of my data. I can then decide where I put it. But to make that technically possible, it will create and requires this collaborative effort to develop these data standards. So bringing back the free market and the balance in the digital landscape. There's only those couple of big companies that don't agree with this. All the other developers in the world, small companies in the world, governments, and even multinational big companies that are not digitally native, they all agree we need better model. So when we look at the sharing problem, when we want to collaborate together, is that it's very difficult. It's the same when we look at the global level is how it looks at the local ecosystem level, is how do we actually help and make the ecosystems to work together. So as a solution is to create these types of uh, collective efforts as open multi-stakeholder parties to working together and start actually working them in a, in a practical manner. So practical looks something like that. Collaborative open standards based sharing model. So having these types of applications and best practices as shared here, simply document it in a practical way so that they make sense to financiers, those who look at it from a strategy perspective, those who look at it from the operations management perspective and those who actually operate them. So that they know Startup Weekend is the best uh, place where this has been done uh, globally so far, where it has been very effective as an as a kind of uh, open model, very doc well documented that anyone can replicate to the point that Google wanted to buy it because it worked so well. So uh, we developed these types of tools, how to document in a sensible way, and then we contribute this for the Open Standard Initiative as part, and then hopefully the initiative multi-stakeholder parties can work together to develop and then innovate further. There's a one sample documentation about how to set up a shareholder agreement workshop as a fully documented example to go along with those templates. And that leads to the co collaboration and transferability, the online library, open standard based uh, documentation about different activities. And there's uh, information about different aspects of what type of shareable elements it can have 
And again, I'm not going to even let you read all of them because we're going to run out of time. But you will get the slides if you want them. The benefits are really uh, obvious and, and, and it's, it's so uh, clear for, for different aspects. And really, to, to this all contributes for the, the, the learning about these different concepts, measurability, silo breaking, operative uh, collaboration towards more shared use, helps in data standardization, the more documented, documented they are, including things like KPIs and so forth. So I'm just showing some of these templates uh, to give an idea that it doesn't have to be complex. The point is that you capture the obvious data and you capture it in the same way everywhere where it matters. And then you make that a standard that you collectively develop with others who use those same templates. From application perspective, it can look something like uh, similar, different headlines. And, uh, and then that helps to make the application sharing possible. So if we think uh, a best practice service can be anything like we have seen here, inserts of co-founders or inserts of team members, and it either have or doesn't have application that supports that activity. Or it can have different applications, but someone can then create only application and not operating those event events themselves. So a, a shareable best practice can include both, with or without application. Applications themselves can be shared with different approaches. So there are growing needs. Everyone creates their own application, and that doesn't make much sense. That's why open source is created. That's why it exists. That's why it's also a winning model. Over decades of development, it becomes a new norm of how software is handled. Uh, but it doesn't need to be open source. There's a lot that can be learned from how open source software is done and make that a shared source only between certain parties. Open source also doesn't mean that the software is free. That's a separate it's the other's choice uh, and so forth. Um, and, and really what we want to initiate with this is to identify those applications, creating directories of those, identifying the needs and making everyone to find each other better. And then if our need is help, uh, if our help is needed in, along the way, then we'll jump in and, and do what is asked. Consider us as a, similar like a real estate broker. You know, someone is selling their home, another, another one is buying a house. There's a difference. The one who live there, they love their home. The one who's buying an apartment, they have a different relationship to that. So a broker may, may be needed to, hey, can you find a middle way here? So that's what we are happy to facilitate, but it's not necessary to that to happen. We're happy to have everyone do uh, direct connections as well. So some of the models that can, can uh, be as simple as knowledge sharing as done here, just for inspiration for others. Uh, it can be connection and data collaboration with or without shared application software in between. It can be to extend your own software as a software as a service to other regions and take care of the operating costs and running that for other ecosystems. And it can be licensing own application software along with documentation and have someone else operate it in another ecosystem. But you can all imagine how much money can be saved here and used in different things and how much faster and better those applications can develop based on the learnings in different ecosystems. So it's all about help our partners to scale and share their applications into new markets and collaboratively develop open standards and connectivity models along the way. So also uh, things can start as a SaaS, like a software as a service, and then it can lead into licensing the software, establishing your own operator and so forth. So it doesn't have to be one model for the whole roadmap life cycle. So you can be flexible in thinking of, of these options. And then quickly on looking how this uh, like uh, geographically focused ecosystems and business verticals, uh, just the simple set of the types of data that is shared in the same place 
uh, in each of them. And the types of data that then becomes more industry specific is not so much necessarily relevant in the, in the data uh, open standard development. So as a key focus is the data model and the data model is something that should be understandable enough from developers perspective as well as business operations perspective. It just tells what information exists in an application. It's not the application itself. It's not the database structure that holds that information. It's just a model that tells what information, uh, in what format information uh, is existing. And this is the first thing for the digital side that we are focusing as an open standard collaborative development with others is to develop the data model that everyone can use as something that they don't have to reinvent a model how they store information but have a model that is shareable if and when they want to share it's a separate choice whether they share or not or if they build connectivity it's like okay i'm not going to build my api you should not build your api model about the data let's build an open standard model and we use that as, as a connectivity method so the model itself can live a similar own life as the startup development phase documentation or, uh, or like a business model canvas. And without anyone controlling it, but collaboratively developing in a logical manner, because if information, it doesn't exist in the model, it should exist in the model. And then the structure is logical based on how the information is only logical way to structure it. So a bit more on the open standard, the key is that it's, it's not meant to be controlled, uh, it's not meant to be a, a vehicle of control, but something to help create a collaborative development. So I'll skip the last one, there's also a template and a model around uh, uh, sharing development project information. But the key really is to understand that while there's a lot to do, it's also relatively simple to measure. Like how much information, uh, data and measures are we capturing in our ecosystem? And how much talent or startup profiles or other applications are we using to, to capture that? So that's the, the, the KPI for the ecosystem level to, to look at. So when we look at the standards, development, we look at this kind of uh, compliance levels on non-digital, it's a simple types of standards we should work on. It's like terminology, sharing best practices, uh, key performance indicators. And when we look at on the digital side, it's things like data model, the next level is application interfaces, and then the applications themselves. But the first ones are like really the lightest, lightest level. So what we want from our side to, to try to push forward is this uh, multi-stakeholder initiative for the open standards for growth to invite other parties, similarly like in my data model, to join and agree to, to basically de declare that we are in. This is something that we believe that is worth supporting and we want to, to join this initiative and then it's a separate effort to put the initiative uh, into more operational shape uh, over time. I, I wanted to put this one slide, we really really hard tried to get uh, Andy to come here uh, from Kaufman Foundation who's doing the ecosystem development uh, program for the whole US. Uh, we've been working with them for, for several years and, uh, and uh, we, we, they are very supportive, they have similar initiative and uh, around uh, what they do in US for ecosystem development and also for uh, looking at the standardization side and the key message from, from our side and from their side is the joint is we won't, don't want to create competitive models but the collaborative ones that they become really global standards. They have many great partners from Malaysia, from uh, Switzerland, from Brazil, 
uh, and many other places that are already uh, committed to this. But uh, the key really is that let's not replicate the, the unstandard world. So, join our Facebook as one step you can take if you haven't taken. Uh, we have a group where you can share information between each other. And we will, of course, facilitate a lot of these conversations going forward as well. So thank you. That was a lot. Questions? Okay, yes. so can, can you give any time frame? Of, you know, where are we at? Where are we heading? What's going to happen? Uh, different to, like, government programs and similar, we don't have any schedule. We just do as much as we can, as fast as we can. So everything is open now. So we will uh, follow up everyone after the event, also in regards of those three steps, who's on board. Uh, we are separated, separately pushing uh, an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, about the founding partners of the uh, Open Standard uh, for Growth that we will follow up with all the, all the participants and our all also wrote the program. Uh, and then we start to together decide how we structure that open standard development. And similarly, like open source pro software development, we put it, you know, existence on, online. And basically anyone who proactively wants to contribute for that, we uh, agree on level of starting point and a role to start contributing for that. And some of the first activities are, for example, from existing applications that want to be uh, kind of uh, on board to share uh, their data models. And we know there's like 1,800 data models from different industries uh, to even do like harmonization work of what's out there and we need to just find similar uh, alignment. It's not something that that needs to be reinvented, but it's just, just work that needs to be done. And we invite everyone to come and do the work. Okay, so we, we have